In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to set up a CDN with WP Supercache. So perhaps the first question we need to answer here is, what is a CDN? Uh, CDN stands for Content Delivery Network, and you can think of it as a way of distributing your website's static content, so you know images and text and so on, uh, to various servers around the world, so that you know if, if, if you're in London, then ideally speaking, the website will load most of its content from a server near you. It just allows for a much faster website load, you know, thus enhancing the uh, user experience thereof. So, to get started, you will need to have WP Supercache installed on your WordPress website and activated with caching on. And we, what we also need to do is we need to actually sign up for a CDN service. Now, there are some that are free, uh, and you know, such as Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a great example of a free CDN, so you can go and use that if you'd like, but. Uh, I'm actually going to use Max CDN, and if you'd like to sign up for that, it's nine dollars a month, and you know you can usually find a coupon code just on the internet uh, that'll further bring down that cost for you at least initially. Uh, and what you need to do is you know just go and sign up, uh, create your account, and then log in. I'm not going to show you that today because you know that's up to you to do, and you know you need to input your credit card details. So. If you'd like to, you can pause this tutorial now and go and sign up before you continue to follow through. So what I've done is I've just purchased the absolute basic package. It's $9 a month uh, at full cost. And I've logged into my Maxidian control panel, which is at cp.maxidian.com. And what we need to do now is set up a zone. If this is new lingo to you, that's okay. It may not make sense straight away, but it will make sense in time. So what we're going to do here, you can see we've got pull zones, push zones, and VOD zones. So we are only going to set up a pull zone today. A pull zone is, generally speaking, the easiest way to set up a CDN uh, with any kind of website, really. So we're just gonna go and click Create Pull Zone. Uh, the pull zone name is, you know, it's up to you. I'm going to set up a pull zone for our music blog, which is a server that I've got set up to demonstrate this today can be found at ourmusicblog.com. Label is, it doesn't really matter, like you can put anything there. So I'm just gonna put WPKB demo. And we just make sure you have compression enabled. It'll definitely help speed up the CDN content even more. Uh, now probably one of the more interesting parts here is setting up a custom CDN domain. What this is, is where all of these static resources will load from. So you can put whatever you like. I'm just going to keep it really super simple now and set it to cdn.ourmusicblog.com. And then when I'm ready, I click create. Okay, we can't have any uh, spaces in there. That's okay. So we'll just fix that and create it. So as it says, it can take up to three minutes to provision the pool zone. So we'll just wait for that to go through. And there we go. So what we've got here is the message saying that the zone has been successfully created. So we can just close this. And in the zone configuration here, we can see we have the CDN URL. So what we now need to do is we actually need to add a CNAME record to our web hosting panel. So assuming you're using uh, you know, a traditional style web host, you, know, you might be using Bluehost, HostGator, uh, you know, Site5, and so on. This process will be largely the same. So well, I'm using Site5 to host this server. So I'm just going to log into my hosting control panel. And then I need to select my site from that drop down list. And CNAME records are DNS records. So these can take a little bit of time to, to propagate through the internet once you set them up, but that's okay. It doesn't take too long. So we just go here and Click DNS, then simple DNS zone editor. And we just need to add the CNAME record in here. So record name, it can be just something as simple as CDN. And what we need to do is go back into our Mac CDN control panel, copy our CDN URL and paste that in there. And now we just click on add CNAME record. 
So the CNAME record has been activated now. So now we just go back into WordPress and I've already got the plugin installed, caching's activated. So what I need to do now is go to the CDN tab. I just need to click enable CDN support, change the offsite URL to include the CDN dot at the start because that's what we defined earlier. We don't need to change anything here in terms of uh, the directories included or the string or anything like that. And we can just skip HTTPS errors to, to avoid mixed content. So unless you're actually using HTTPS on your website, you should definitely check that box. And then we just click save changes. So that should be up and running now, but we've currently got caching enabled. So what I want to do now is just go and flush the cache. So we'll just do that now and delete the cache. So that's all we need to do. We've set up a CDN for our website. It can take a little bit of time to actually, you know, get that content off your website and up to, you know, the CDN. You can, as it says here, it says test some static URLs. So you can just open that in a new tab and see if it works. So it's not found yet. So it's really not propagating through the internet. So it can take a few hours to do this. So while you're waiting, you know, just wait for it to go through and then go and check later on. So that's where we wrap up this tutorial today. We've shown you how to set up a CDN with Mac CDN uh, and you know, making a CNAME in your hosting control panel. It'll be the same pretty much for any CDN provider and you know most web hosts in that regard. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask in the comments below.